Welcome back. I am in conversation with Mr. Ravi Kumar, Senior RSS Leader and International Joint Coordinator of the Hindu Swayam Sevak Sangh. Uh, Mr. Ravi Kumar, what do you think is India's biggest challenge today? We still have poverty. Uh, we still have a lot of political issues. What do you think are some of the greatest challenges uh, faced by this country today? Uh, before I answer this question, let me also put that every challenge comes with a blessing. The other side of challenge is opportunity. And uh, let us see, India has the biggest youth power in the world. Correct. And if it is harnessed properly, if the skills are developed, then it will help the entire world. Even today, the biggest workforce in Middle East is the Indian uh, workforce. And the biggest workforce brain-wise in the, all the developed countries is the IT experts and the professionals Correct. and the doctors and mm -hmm. the engineers of mm -hmm. India. So Indian uh, talent will be used all over the world. Mm -hmm. And uh, so to seeing the scenario that is changing in the world so fast, we have to produce several uh, people who can go around the world. But I must take this opportunity to ask you, Mr. Ravi Kumar, we, we have the youngest population, as you very rightly said. We have done nuclear tests. We are a nuclear power today. We have done so well in so many fields. But yet, still, we fight over religion. We talk about religious issues. Are, are people really bothered about this? Are the young generation really bothered about this? Religious, religion is an extremely personal issue. What you say is perfectly, I agree fully with you. But in democracy, you must allow fighting also. Mm -hmm. Because that is how you become stronger and stronger and stronger. If you don't fight, you will not become stronger. True. It, we are not fighting on the to, state, we, don't we are fighting only on the team. Kill. We, 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 we let us fight, but we don't have to fight to kill people. No, no, no. Killing is very bad. Mm -hmm. And I think compared to the uh, 60s, there is no killing going on here. Correct. But verbal, yes, you must have. Because Debate. in the ancient time, the Buddhists and the Hindus were fighting on the streets. Only intellectual fight mm -hmm. because that is how the journey has to take place and yeah. then the society will go higher level. Mm -hmm. So this we should not stop. The freedom of expression for anybody to say anything, let it continue. The people are the judges in the TV, no matter what he says or he says, the people will judge for now, you. Now, 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 now uh, you have done a lot of interesting things, you know, uh, apart from, uh, okay, you, you, you are the International Joint Con Coordinator of the Hindu Swayam Sabak Sangh, but you have done several Lord Buddha exhibitions uh, in Thailand, which I think is a very interesting uh, concept because, uh, you know, the two religions, Buddhism and uh, the Sanatan uh, mm. faith, mm. I think there is some convergence uh, somewhere and that uh, that you are trying to sort of perhaps uh, make people realize. Is that uh, the objective? What, what are you doing uh, on the, in that area? Mm. <coughs> See, Lord Buddha is one of the icons of India. Correct. The whole world understands to through great people, two great sons of India. One is Lord Buddha and another is Gandhi. Correct. The whole world respects India because of these two people. Because they stood for something unique. So when uh, Buddha, when he tastes, the difference between a Buddhism and Hinduism, once a professor asked, I asked him, please come to an India, we have a dialogue with the Buddhism and Hinduism. He said, I will not come because you Hindus have murdered Buddhism in India. He said, why? You please tell me how you say that we have uh, simply uh, killed uh, Buddhism. He, tell me, he asked me, how many Buddhists are there in India? I said, uh, there are about 80 percent uh, in India are Buddhists. He said, how you say that? I said, whom you call Buddhism, in India we call Hinduism. Tell me one difference, major difference between your Buddhism, concept of Buddhism and our Hinduism. Mm -hmm. you, have, uh, you have Bhakti, you have Dhamma, we say Dharma. Yeah. You have um, Moksha. All these words, karma, dharma, moksha, mm -hmm. all are common, mm -hmm. same. So, only nomenclature has differed, <laughs> otherwise we all say follow the same philosophy. Mm -hmm. Then he waited, then he said, okay, wherever you call me, I am ready to come, I am convinced. So, that is how the Hindus and Buddhists can come together on various issues. So, it is a, a synchronizing the energy. Synchronizing so, the energy. Uh, now, another thing I'd like to know uh, is that, you know, Northeast India, uh, we are talking in Guwahati. Uh, you don't come to this place very often, no, uh, very and, rarely, but yeah. you are going to come now. <laughs> for, for, uh, uh, <laughs> uh, now, my mm -hmm. question to you, uh, Mr. Ravi Kumar, is this. Uh, you know, Northeast India is very, very interestingly positioned. As you know, it is at the at the beginning of Southeast Asia. It's called as the beginning of Southeast Asia. Yeah. Uh, it's a bridge between two great regions, South mm -hmm. Asia and Southeast Asia. Uh, it's a direct linkage, you know. Uh, you know it very well. Uh, 
Now my question is, uh, do you think we have the potential uh, to bring a b cultural bridge between the rest of India, Northeast India and uh, Myanmar, Thailand to the entire Buddhist circuit, you know, Laos, Cambodia, uh, you know, even parts of China. So how do you look at this uh, from a global perspective? Just wait for a few years, mm -hmm. maybe five, ten years. The railway uh, train that starts in Singapore, extreme south, will run through Malaysia, Malaysia mm -hmm. uh, Thailand, Chaos. Burma mm -hmm. and come right up to Bodh Gaya also. And then through here to China to Russia. Is, All this is, is going to happen. Is it, is, it a, is it a dream? Is it a dream? It's good to dream. <laughs> uh, when, but do you when, think it's going to become a reality? When the TV was not there, TV was a dream. They say in uh, Mahabharata, Sanjay was uh, showing all these pictures, yeah. but it's only a dream. Mm -hmm. Everything is a dream today. Uh, what was dream yesterday has become today. What is dream today? So, North East is a potential? Of course. North East uh, will be, uh, play the maximum role in bringing these people from Burma and Thailand to India. Absolutely. On that note, we shall go for another short break. Stay on. We'll be right back.